watching on the internet. I'm so glad you can see me through all this smoke going on around here. It's not smoky in the church here, so it should be clear what we're saying. Uh, but anyway, be in prayer for all the people around here. If you're not in this area, or if you're in this area, be in prayer for the folks. There's a lot going on with these fires, you know, this is terrible. Uh, I'm sitting and reading in my house there this afternoon, and I looked out and I thought, well, that's rain clouds. And then it dawned on me, that's smoke. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, you, out in the parking lot, ash is falling, and it's uh, just terrible. Uh, so be in prayer for the folks here in Bay County, and, and Gulf County, I think, as well. I don't know, I'm sure there's probably others, but, but uh, we just need to uh, continue to lift them up for safety, for the first responders, for, for the police, uh, just everyone. And the poor folks that can't even get into their homes to check on it, they, they're restricted uh, entry. Okay, well tonight, I'm gonna to be talking on a favorite subject of all good Baptists. Uh, we all know this, and know the, uh, the title, and what it means, and if you don't, I'm gonna explain it tonight. The Romans Road. We're going to go down that old Romans Road. You all know what that is, the Romans Road? Well, we're going to talk about it. And God loves us so very much that he sent, he sent Jesus to die for us. And that's what we're going to talk about today as we go down that Romans Road. There's going to be a lot of scripture, and it's going to be starting in Romans 3.23. Romans 3.23. It's a, a supplemental passage here I want to read. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am foremost of all. Yet for this reason I found mercy, so that in me, as a foremost, Jesus Christ must demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. First Timothy 1, 15 and 16, that's from the New American Standard Bible. Uh, it just it, we can't say enough about uh, what God has done for us. You hear me talk about that all the time. We need to praise God, give Him the glory for what He's done, sending His Son Jesus to die for us, and that we may have life and have it more abundantly. He wants us to have nothing but the best for His children. Now, as children, there's no always good children. Like any children, we have difficult times and we do things wrong. But you know what? The Bible says that God is faithful to forgive us. 1 John 1, 9. If you want to mark that in your Bibles, you folks out there on the internet want to mark that in your Bibles, so you always know that you can go to God and confess your sins, and He is faithful to forgive. That doesn't give you a license to continue to do sins, but you know what? It's just such a good thing to know that God loves us so much. You know, but I got to tell you this now. I want to be perfectly honest with you. Some of the decisions we have, good or bad, have consequences. Consequences. So you might have to be ready to pay the consequences. But just remember, God has forgiven you. God has forgiven you. Well, man's failure. That's what we're going to talk about here first. Man's failure. Uh, you know, a uh, related story about trying to balance a, a bank account and or an other account is not re reconciling. Yeah, you know, I, I get a slip of paper every month from my bank telling me how to reconcile my checkbook. You know, when you go in there and you say, okay, you wrote these checks and they, you know, the ones that didn't bounce, they had them over here, you know, and they, they can show you, you know, how much is withdrawn from your account and you take and make sure that it all comes out even. That, that we need to do that. Now, I know that they don't teach that in schools, I don't think, anymore, how to balance a checkbook, and I think that's important for people to know. Or how to handle credit cards. I think that's so important to know. You know, it's just like God, you know, when, when we, we take and, and we, we spend things, we spend money we don't have. You know, and when that's called credit. And then pretty soon that credit builds up such a big thing that we cannot pay it. So we have to go bankrupt. We just can't, you know, we can't handle the, the debt anymore. Well, you know, that's kind of like, like what we do with God, isn't it? We sin so much, finally we just say, God, I can't handle sin anymore. I need you in my life. I remember the day I cried that out in my own life when I asked Jesus to come into my heart. 
because I knew I couldn't handle it myself. It was just things in my life that I knew was not supposed to be there, and God wanted them gone. And so I just I surrendered my heart and life to God, and it's just been wonderful ever since. Oh, did I tell you I didn't skip from mountaintop to mountaintop? That there's been valleys in my life, but you know what? I wasn't alone. That's a good part about it. God was always there with me, through thick and thin. It's, it's kind of a, a, a father that just doesn't abandon his children if you're nasty, if you do something wrong, you know. Uh, you take his car out and you, you dent it, you know. I'm sure none of, nobody in here has ever done that. Uh, but you know what? God forgives us. But just like your dad, he may forgive you, but you have to work off that payment. So there is consequences. But everybody, I want to know everybody, in 323, everybody, uh, this we're all in the same boat. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's what we need to make sure people understand. You know, when you say, tell somebody, you need to be saved. You need to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Saved from what? I'm not drowning. I'm okay. You know? <coughs> Excuse me. The smoke is giving me. <coughs> it must be because I'm a bit crazy. But we need to realize that, hey, we have all sinned. And you say, I haven't said what the Bible said. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in His Word? The Bible says very plain. Now, I'm not making this up now. 323 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 323. You might want to underline that. You might want to highlight that. So you'll have that. But everybody is sinned. Everybody is in the same condition. Everybody. We're all sinners. We're all sinners. And as we're like sheep who have gone astray, each of us have turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the inequity of us all to fall on him. Isaiah 53, 6. <coughs> Boy. <coughs> Folks out there, I'm, I'm so sorry. <coughs> oh. All right, now, we all sin. We talk about that, we all sin. Now, I want you to turn over in your Bibles, if you're out there watching this on the Internet, turn over in your Bibles to Romans 6.23. 6.23, it says, what, well, like I said, there's, there's consequences to, <coughs> to our wrong thinking, or stinking thinking, as we like to call it. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Life. Eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Eternal life. Well, you know, I want to tell you something. There's going to be eternal life. Oh, thanks so much. There's going to be eternal life. But the difference is where you're going to spend it. You know, they talk about in real estate, there's three important things about real estate. Location, location, location. That's the same way eternity. In three, in location, location, location. Where you're going to spend eternity. Heaven or hell, smoking or not smoking, that's your choice. That's everybody's choice. Excuse me just a minute. I think we're getting enough of the smoking now. <clears throat> All right. Any sin is a cause for us to die. There's a penalty to pay for our sin. But God forgives us. He forgives us. You know, you ever done something when you were little or growing up that really made your mom or your dad mad at, you know, and they said, ah, I'm so sorry that you did that because I'm not going to ever forgive you. You're going to pay for that for the rest of your life. Your mom and dad ever say that to you? Of course not. Of course not they didn't. I hope not anyway, because why? Mom and dad will forgive you. But you know what? God loves you more. He loves you multiple more. So much more than you can't believe. He forgives us. Because he loves us. And I said that, I've told you many times, I love all you people in the church here, but I wouldn't send either one of my sons to the cross for you. I just couldn't do it. God did it though. He did it. He sent his son Jesus. 
the perfect Lamb of God, to pay that sin debt. Well, a, a debt he didn't know, but a debt we couldn't pay. We couldn't pay ourselves. So God had to arrange for his son Jesus to come and die for us. I don't know. People, if you can get a hold of that, you can go a long ways. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. One of the first verses I ever learned in the Bible. I was asked to go preach at a church up by Mariana one Sunday, and I prayed and prayed to God, God, give me a sermon to preach. God, please help me. And it's getting down to the eighth hour where I needed to have something. You know, I just couldn't walk out there and say, guess what, I didn't come prepared. I was going to wing it. But God kept telling me, John 3.16. God, I said, that's for children. Come on, I'm going to go preach to adults. You know, and I, I can't. And John 3.16. Just kept telling me, John 3.16. Well, I found out later that the people have been pretty well beat up by somebody. And, uh, all he ever told them was how much God didn't like them and how much, you know, all the bad things. And I said, well, maybe, you know what, maybe John 3.16 will be God. That'll do it. And I preached John 3.16. Now, I'm saying it's not me now. Don't think I'm saying I'm here saying I'm another Billy Graham. No, sir. I, but I preach God's Word. The deacons had to get up to help me with all the people coming forward, crying, just asking for forgiveness. I'm telling you what, I was praising God. I was walking on streets of gold that day. I wasn't even in heaven yet, but I was still walking on the streets of gold. Wow, that was exciting. I did what God wanted me to do. I did what God wanted me to do. And you can ask my friend Roy that comes here, Roy and Mary. I had a sermon all prepared one day. I mean, it was, I really worked on it. It was a good sermon. But I was sitting out here waiting to get up to preach. God says, I don't want you to preach that sermon today. And he gave me the scripture. I don't remember what it was, no, but he gave me a scripture to preach. I'm going, oh God, I, I can't do that. You might, don't, don't they tell us, be prepared, have your points, you know, have your three points in a poem, or three points in a joke in a poem, or something. you got to be organized. Well, I said, no, God, you, you've never steered me wrong. I'm going to do it. And I got up and preached in there again. The Word of God went out and touched people. It wasn't me. It wasn't me at all. But it was the Word of God. And when we're true to the Word of God, He works miracles. Just like I was, I was over there in uh, the war zone, they were talking about some of the soldiers and the witnessing what they've seen happening, how God's moving over there. He didn't want His people hurt. Look at Israel and all the problems that they have. But they're still God's people. And the Bible says, I'll bless them that bless you and I'll curse them that curse you. Amen. Keep on blessing Israel. Keep on praying for Israel. God showed us how he loved us in John 3, 16. And so, and so many times, not just back then, but every day, every day I get up and I take a breath. I know God still loves me because I can still breathe. Sometimes not very good, but I still got the breath in me. Praise God for it. But Jesus made up the difference for man's shortcoming. He sure did. He made sure that, you know, we, we succeed when, he, when we're doing what he wants us to do. When he tells us, when he calls us to do something like Mike Silver, when God calls you, you need to do it. You need to do it. I don't know what he's calling you for. I don't know what, what uh, level you are on with God. And you folks out there on the internet, I don't know where you are with God. But I do know where you need to be with God, and that's down on your knees praying for forgiveness of our sins because the Bible says that my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I will hear from heaven and forgive them and heal their land. You want your land healed? Huh? Wow. Oh, that's the word of God. I'm not making this up. I can't, I'm too dumb to make it up. God, give me those words. Yes, for a while the enemies were reconciled.
reconciled to God through the death of his son, then so much more, having been reconciled, we still be saved by his life, by his death and his life. We're saved. Oh, there's been a lot of people come along, a lot of false prophets, when they say, oh yeah, I'm the, I'm the new Messiah, I'm the new way, I'm the new age, I'm the new this and all that. Hey, I don't need nothing new. I got Jesus. I, I got the Son of God, and He's my Savior. <coughs> Get a little warmed up here for a minute. Mm. That's a good call. Good coffee, yeah. Good coffee. <laughs> I, I turn my water into coffee most of the time. <clears throat> All right. Jesus made the difference. <clears throat> Man, I tell you. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the inequity of all of us to fall on him. He took our inequity. He took our sins on him. And he paid that debt. He went to the cross for us. You know. There's only two things, two people that will die for you, and you heard me say this over and over and over again. A soldier and Jesus. That's the only two that will die for you. Well, believer's salvation in 10-9, I'm going to find that here in a minute. I've got to turn over a few pages there. 10-9, 10-9, and it's right here. I got my finger on it. If you confess with your mouth, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus, the Lord Jesus, and believe in the heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's saved. You want to go to heaven someday? There it is. It's telling you right there. Romans 10, 9. Wow. My goodness. How can it be any more plainer than that? You know, we don't need to complicate it. We don't need all these other things to go about. Just be, it's simple. Just simple. Nothing complicated about it. For, uh, in verse 10, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You know, on Sunday mornings, and we stand up front here, and we invite people to come down front for salvation. We ask them, come, come on down here and we'll pray for you and we'll show you what it means to be saved. Okay? Salvation is open to all those who believe. That's a requirement. To all those that what? Believe. you got to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He, ro he rose from the dead. You know, and, and oh man, is that is that complicated? Huh? Do I need to have you send me ten thousand dollars and I'll sell you salvation? Salvation is free. Jesus paid the price. You know, just like our freedom, we talk about freedom in this country. Somebody paid the price. We need to realize that. And then verse thirteen it says this. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. There it is. Is that complicated? Is that pretty straightforward? You bet it is. For all who call on the name of the Lord. I'll tell you, I've told you already, I remember the day that I called on the Lord Jesus Christ to be my Savior, and He answered me. He has already had His hand down to reach it for me because I couldn't reach that high, but He reached down to me. He reached down and, and took my hand, and he's never let go. He's never let go. Because if I, if I was holding his hand and things got rough, I might let go. But with him holding my hand, buddy, that's security. That's security that you just can't get from Wall Street. You can't get it from all these insurance companies that tell you, you know, just pay for what you need. Well, I'll tell you what, pray for what you need. That's what you need to do. You need to pray for it. All right? And for God so loved the world, like I already told you, that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Except through me. John 14, 6. There again. Is there any other way to heaven? Is there any other way to God? No other way. 
He only accepts through the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, people try to say, oh yeah, there's all these other prophets and everything. That's the way to heaven. You know, we can get you there. You can have, why, if you give your life, you can have 76 virgins waiting for you there in heaven. I want to tell you, I just want to see Jesus. That's all I want to see. I want to see Jesus. Open my eyes from death, and I want to look up and see the face of Jesus. All right? All right, I'm going to close out here now so we can get out of this place and get in some pure air where we can breathe. <laughs> now, all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself, to Christ, and give us the ministry of reconciliation, namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against him. And he has committed to us the word of reconciliation, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. All right? Now, I hope I made the point to you today. I hope I made it simple. I don't want to make it complicated because it's not complicated. And you know, other people, they try, try to add all these big theological words on it. You know, uh, but I want to tell you something. Love is simple when it comes from God. It's pure when it comes from God. It's a godly kind of love. It's a giving love. It's not a taking love. You know, everybody, oh, darling, I love you so much. I'll hold the lantern while you chop the wood. You know, that's not really love. Try that sometime. You'll be in a world of hurt. All right, anything else? Let's close out then. Father God, I thank you so much, dear Father, for your love. I thank you for all you provide for us day in and day out, God. We can count on you, Father, to be there for us, Lord. And just take our hand. Lead us, Lord. And Father, just keep us on that straight and narrow path that we need to be on. Father God, thank you for what you're doing here at this church. I pray again, Father, for all the people that are in harm's way this evening because of those fires, Father. Please, Father, send us rain. Send us rain, God, that will put these fires out, that people can go back home, the ones that have homes to go back to. God, thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' precious holy name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you all for being here this evening. Appreciate you.